Good morning everyone and welcome to our class, Art Appreciation. We are now on the week 6, modules 11. Under chapter 3, Aesthetics, Study of Art and Beauty. Today our topic is Western View of Beauty. For learning outcome, we have to classify the Western view of beauty in art according to its time period. These are the references. The nature of beauty is one of the most enduring and controversial themes in Western philosophy. And is, with the nature of art, one of the two fundamental issues in philosophical aesthetics. Beauty has traditionally been counted among the ultimate values with goodness, truth, and justice. It is a primary theme among the ancient Greek, Hellenistic, and medieval philosophers and was central to 18th and 19th century thought. So today we will learn the beauty. Um, we will learn uh, the Western view of beauty how they look beauty in um, the Western concept, okay, the Western concept of art. Let's proceed. <coughs> we have ancient Greece, now ancient Greece during 600 BCE. The Greeks believed that man was an ideal form. So man is the measure of all things. Okay, for them, man is the measure of all things. Again, as I have said, uh, they firmly believe that man was an ideal form. And their works reflect an interest in the naturalistic world. That's why most of their art emphasizes the ideal figure. Okay, take a look at this. Okay. Uh, most of the figures are in statues, okay, statues figure, because the ideal, okay, the ideal, or they believe that man was in ideal form, okay. Since man is the measurable things, they are concerned more with geometry and symmetry rather than original expression. Let's proceed with the ancient Greek architecture. So here it's more on their architecture is more dedicated to the goddess of Athena. Okay. Let's take a look. Here we have the Parthenon during 448 to 432 BC in Athens. Okay, we have the Hellenistic art <coughs> during 323 to 331 BC, and it is characterized by an emotional, active, and dynamic style. And it also reflected the attitude of despair that Athenians shared after the defeat at the hands of the Spartans around 432 BC. Okay, so during this time, uh, they were defeated by the Spartans. So that's why you can see here uh, most of um, most of the art, okay, most of their art in the statutes figure are here. Are, you know, it's like um, it's a sort of desperation, no? Here, the Night of Samoth Race. 200 BC, the Dying Gaul. Okay, so these are the ancient Roman art. Okay, uh, ancient Roman architecture. These are uh, worked. Okay, the Romans worked on extensive building programs. They used concrete, an innovation that allowed for faster building and a larger scale. Like for example. Uh, the Colosseum during 72 to 80 AD 
it was dominated by Greek orders of columns. Okay. Here. This is the ancient Roman architecture, the, the Pantheon, no, the Pantheon during 118 to 125 AD. Okay. Since there was a collapse, okay, there was a, a collapse during uh, ancient Romans, okay, during the time of uh, ancient Romans, pumasok ngayon yung early Christian, uh, early Christian art, okay. We have the medieval art and architecture. So, Again, as I've said, since nagkaroon ng collapse sa mga building, no, ng mga architectural uh, building, pumasok ngayon during the medieval art, uh, medieval times, itong mga cathedrals. Okay. Yan. Ito naman yung nasa loob, no? Nasa loob ng, ito yung mga painting sa loob ng cathedral. You can see the Gothic art by Giotto's frescoes. It says here, uh, the lamentation of Christ. Okay. So let's take a look at the Middle Ages from 476 to 1453. It says here, in 410, Rome was conquered and the Roman Empire or the Roman Empire fell. So most art was created for the church for a mainly illiterate population. Drawings were renderings of biblical stories. So, during 1350, there was a black plague killed uh, 506 or 50,680% of Europe's population. Okay, so this is the black plague. Okay, let's take a look at the early Renaissance. Uh, early Renaissance began in Florence in Italy in the year 1500. Okay, Florence was free to you rule itself because it gave the Pope money. In turn, they were given freedom. Okay. So, uh, the Florence as the new Athens pushed the artists upon the ambitious campaign to finish the great artistic enterprises which were begun a century before at the time of Giotto. Okay, so these are the early Renaissance painting. This is by Musaccio, the Holy Trinity with the Virgin and Saint John. Okay. Again, um, the Birth of Venus by Botticelli. This is also in 15th century, early Renaissance. Okay. Renaissance is literally rebirth. Okay, describes uh, the revival of the interest in the artistic achievements of the classical world. Okay. In addition, now the arts benefited from the patronage of such influential groups as the Medici family of Florence. Okay. So during the Renaissance, we have some uh, we have some artists. Um, like Leonardo da Vinci, okay, who is very famous, okay, and he was the archetypal Renaissance man representing the humanistic values of the period in his art, uh, especially in science and in writing, okay. Some of the ideas of the Italian Renaissance did spread to other parts of Europe, for example, to the German artist. No, Albrecht Durer of the Northern Renaissance. Okay. This is Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. Again, let's have a short background of uh, The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci. It is found in Milan. Okay, so as of today, it is, it says here, it's totally a mess. So it is uh you know the background uh, uh yung kanyang mga uh, form no it, it became disintegrated okay 
So it says here, famous, it is famous because it shows a famous subject in Christian iconography, the Last Supper. <coughs> Up until that point, an artist would have painted the disciples as individuals, but Leonardo painted the disciples in groups so that there is life, fluidity. Okay. Here we have Leonardo's Mona Lisa in 1503 to 1506. Okay, let's take a look at Michelangelo's contribution. Michelangelo is very famous on his contribution to Sistine Chapel, uh, the ceiling of Sistine Chapel, the Pieta, uh, the David. Okay, so he considered himself a sculptor and he believed that spirit was trapped in stone only to be set free by the sculpture. Uh, through this, he revolutionized or re he revolutionized the art of sculpture. He felt divinely inspired. So these are the obra of Michelangelo's David. The Sistine Chapel. Okay. The ceiling of Sistine Chapel. Okay. Here we have Raphael, the School of Athens. In 1510 to 1511, we have mannerism in 16th century, Madonna with the long neck. Okay, we also have uh, Baruch art in 1600 to 1750. Okay, here we have Caravaggio. Rembrandt, the Baruch sculpture, no, Bernini's David in 1623. Okay, let's take a look at the neoclassicism in 70, during 1750 to 1880. It says here, <coughs> it is originated as a reaction, it originated as a reaction to the Baruch, a fanciful flourishing style that dominated from 1680 to 1750. Okay, sought to revive uh, the ideals of ancient Greek and Roman art. Monticilio is perfect architectural example in the U.S. Okay, let's take a look here. So, ito yun, no? Monticilio. Okay. The perfect example or the perfect architectural example in the U.S. Okay. This is Gustav uh, Gustav Corbet, the stone breakers or the stone breakers in 1849. Manet the Pfeiffer in 1850. Okay. And also we have Impressionism, the late 19th century, early 20th century. It was <coughs> derived from uh, Claude Monet's painting Impressionism, the sunrise. Okay. Here we have Monet, uh, the river in 1868. Okay. Renoir. Rodin, uh, the thinker in 1879 to 1880. Also Degas, the top in 1886. Okay. Mary Cassath, the bath in 1891. Okay, Henry O. Tanner, the banjo lesson in 1893. Okay. So, um, post-impressionism is different from impressionism in the artist's desire to attain more form and structure as well as more expression and emotion into their pain paintings. Now, the artists led away from the naturalistic approach. Okay, similarities between Impressionism and Post-Impressionism include both used a real-life subject. Okay, so in the Post-Impressionism, um, 
we consider here uh, the expression and the emotion of uh, their paintings. Okay. Like here, uh, the painting of Van Gogh, the bedroom at Arles in 1887. Okay. So, sabi dyan, no, sa story, uh, yung kanyang, uh, yung kanyang bedsheet ay kulay pula. No, in psychology, in psychology, pag ang bedsheet mo, no, ay kulay pula, um, it attracts sexual pleasure. Okay. So, it's more on uh, here, during the post-impressionism, so again, we reiterate, it's more on expression and emotion. They, they put their, their, uh, their emotions, their, expre their expressions into paintings. Okay. Like Van Gogh, the bedroom at Arles. Paul Cezanne. Okay. Still life with a peppermint bottle in 1880. 1890 to 1894. Munch, the scream in 1890 to 1894. Okay. Cubism. During 1907 to 1914, it is led by Picasso, also Duchamp, characterized by rejecting a single viewpoint. Okay. So, it is influenced by Einstein's theory of relativity. We also have Picasso, the self-portrait. Okay. Okay. Also, we have surrealism during 1920 to 1930s. It is led by Dali, no? the Champ, O'Keefe. Now, these artists they are interested in expressing imagination as revealed in dreams and beyond. No, when you say it is above reality, it is sure. Okay, so it is influenced by Freud's idea of the subconscious, subconscious self. Okay, the subconscious. Um, meaning, uh, surrealism, they express imagination. For example, Kung ano yung napanaginipan nila, okay, what revealed in dreams, and be, uh, what revealed in dreams, no, they would, they would, um, <coughs> they would paint it, okay, they would paint it, okay, they will express, okay, they will express through painting, okay, so, again, sabi nga dyan, it is influenced by Freud's idea of the subconscious self. Okay, yung mga subconscious, no? yung mga nakatago dito, yung mga repressed emotions natin, yung mga, yung mga wishes natin, unfulfilled wish na nakatago dito sa ating utak no? or sa ating mind, okay? sa ating brain. Na sometimes, uh, nandoon lang. So, that's why it is repressed. Okay? That's why it is repressed. And sometimes, nagre-reveal siya sa ating mga dreams. Itong mga artist na to, like Dali, Duchamp, okay, O'Keefe, kung ano yung napanaginipan nila, they will, they will put it or they will express it in true paintings. Okay, that's why it is surrealism. Like here, uh, the painting of Duchamp, the nude descending the stair. Dali, Salvador Dali, no? the persistence of memory. Okay. American social realism during 1930 to 1950s. It was influenced by French Impressionism and Surrealism. Okay, it depicts loneliness and isolation of the time. Okay, let's take a look. Grant Wood, no, the American Gothic in 1930. It says here, uh, took at its subject the reality of American life. And it depicts loneliness in isolation of the time, during the time of American social realism. Edward Hopper, Night Walks in 1942. Okay. Archibald Motley, A Night Life in 1943. Okay. Jacob Lawrence, The Migration Series. Okay. 
Let's proceed to abstract expressionism during 1940 to 1960s. Um, abstract expressionism, yung mga proponents nito ay sila Jackson Pollock, Mart Rathkel, and De Kooning. These painters express their feelings and subconscious thoughts through his work or through their works. Okay, so there is a massive canvas, okay, and they they employ to convey powerful emotions through the glorification of the act of painting itself so the painter would paint abstract forms which do not directly represent a specific object okay so let's take a look so ganun din no para din siyang surrealism surrealism yung approach but here um they would express or they would express their feelings and subconscious thoughts through their work at yung kanilang kanilang uh, kanilang uh, way or means through art it's it's abstract okay it's abstract but that is full of uh, emotions no? here for example Jackson Pollock number 32 Okay, it's like an, uh, uh, Jackson Pollock is actually the father of action painting. Okay, so we do not know why he entitled this uh, this painting as number thirty two during nineteen fifty. Mark Rothko, okay, Mark Rothko, number ten. Okay. Okay, let's proceed to pop art. Pop art began during 1950 to 1960s. It's led by Warhol and Liechtenstein. It reflected a fascination with the pop culture reflecting the affluence of post-war society. And it is a direct descendant of Dadaism uh, in the way that it makes fun of the art world. Like for example here, uh, Andy Warhol, um, the Campbells, no? I don't know if you can still remember uh, um, the advertisement. Uh, I could see that advertisement before. Okay. That is considered as pop art. Okay. And also we have a straight photography. Focus on realistic and objective photography. Photojournalism, no? Here. Ansel Adams, Dorothy Lange. Okay, we have postmodernism during 1960s to present. It is led by Jasper Johns and David Hockney. And it is characterized by a move away from highbrow art and towards a more eclectic and populist populist approach. Yeah. David Hockney. John's Ventry Lockwist in 18 or 1983. Okay, so those are the viewpoints no, in different times in Western, no, how they view. So we have seen how the Western uh, view the beauty of art, with regard to art, rather. So thank you for listening. Okay, thank you for listening to our discussion. So at this time, you will have or you will proceed with your quiz. Well, thank you so much.